the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter, John, and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he'd said. And while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. And then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, you've got to get a glory in the work you do. A hallelujah chorus in the heart of you. Paint or tell a story or sing or shovel coal. But you've got to get a glory or the job lacks soul. Oh, Lord, give me a glory. Is it much to give? For you've got to get a glory or you just don't live. The great whose shining labors made our horses throb were the men who got a glory in their daily job. The battle might be gory and the odds unfair, but the men who got a glory never knew despair. O oh Lord, give me a glory when all else is gone. If you've only got a glory, you can still go on. Is all about glory. And if you want a prayer for this week, a simple glory, not just for the beginning of the day, but during the day, this is it. Lord, you've got to give me a glory. It's all about glory. Moses goes up the mountain and upon his descent amongst the people discovers that his face is so radiant with glory that the people say to him, put on a mask. I hope no one says that to me as they leave church today. <laughs> it's all about glory. As Peter writes that letter, can you hear him? He's, as an old man, he's reminiscing about his life and he's remembering that incredible moment on the Mount of Transfiguration, when in his words, the majestic glory appears to him. Of course, in the epistle, he doesn't say anything about blurting out inappropriate comments because he didn't know what else to say. It's all about glory. And such is the glorious, I love this word, the glorious effulgent of Jesus in his transforming transfiguration that even the great figures of Jewish tradition shine in response to him. Friends, it's all about glory. Each one of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, include this transfiguration story, but each of them has their own way of telling it. Matthew declines to mention Peter's outburst. 
But then Matthew is concerned about the establishment of the church, and it may be he didn't want its founder to be anything else but perfect in the minds of his readers. Mark, practical as ever, Mark, adds a note that there is no cleaning agent that could possibly have made the garment so white. You could not go to Food Lion and find anything that would work whiteness as the glory. And then Luke, ever sensitive to signs of humanity, is the only gospel to record that the, God, that the disciples were almost sleeping, very, very weary. And though John's Gospel does not contain this glory, a story, John's Gospel is filled with references and stories about glory. Doxa, glory, is one of his great themes. It's all about glory. I believe that our hearts yearn our minds desire, our souls ache to experience glory in our lives, in our relationships, in our work, no matter how mundane it may seem from time to time. Lord, we want that glory that transforms the mundane into the eternal, the prosaic into the lyrical, the common into the profound. And just two observations about glory from our readings for today. First, glory is reflective. Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Moses and Elijah did not know that their faces were shining because they were in the glory of God. But if you and I spend time with God in worship, in prayer, during the day in reflection, if we will do that, I promise you, you will shine with a glory that only God can give. And we don't have to do anything about it. God gives the glory. There's no need for heavenly beauticians to work on our face. There's no need for divine apparel stores to bedeck our bodies. This work of glorification is done by God and as he wishes. And secondly, glory is evanescent. It passes away. Now maybe, actually it's not maybe, I think it is sadly part of the religious psyche that experiences that we have are forced to become traditions. The spontaneity is often transfigured into history. You see, our dear friend Peter, and who cannot love Peter? Our dear friend Peter wanted to take the, the spontaneous, the unexpected, and establish it there forever. Master, it's good that we're here. Let us build uh, three booths that we can stay here forever. Peter the fisherman finds a new vocation. It's now Peter the Builder. But perhaps Peter knew, and it's just in those verses after our Gospel, perhaps Peter knew that as soon as their feet left the Transfiguration Mount, so they would be hurled into the chaos and mess of the world. The experience of glory enables God's children to walk into a world of chaos. Today we welcome Doreen Trottier from the Open Door community in Sally Love. That glorious ministry of ODCC reminds me 
that my experience of glory here today must not glue me to my church chair, but rather propel me into a world to deal with demons of hunger, homelessness, poverty, and isolation. How about you? Friends, we should be praying more often and with more vigor for glory in our lives. If we find ourselves sitting by the bedside of a sick person, Lord, show me glory. If we're coping with financial challenges, Lord, show me glory. If we're living life on life's terms, Lord, show me glory. And the poem I quoted at the beginning of this sermon ends with these words. To those who get a glory, it is like the sun, and you can see it glowing through the work they've done. O oh Lord, give the glory and a workman's pride, for you've got to get a glory, or you're dead inside. Not us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.